This is episode 247, and today we're chatting about whether or not keto should be an everyday thing, organ support through the ketogenic diet, the plant that's more powerful and potent than kale, and the foods that encourage your body to heal. If you have questions about today's content, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. Our guest today is Dr. Josh Axe, and he and I are chatting about really when you're coming to keto with the intention of promoting healing through your body, what foods you should be focusing on, how you're going to detoxify your body, how to naturally do that. Because I know when I first started keto, I was like, but how do I do a juice cleanse? (laughs) You don't need to do a juice cleanse. Now, this is a rehash of an old episode that we did. And I just really, really love this episode. Y'all did, but maybe you are new to the show and you missed it. Really good one. I hope you enjoy it. It's my birthday today, and I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate than to pick one of my most favorite episodes, so I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's do this thing. Hey, I'm Leanne Vogel, and you're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. I've put together a free 21-page guide on achieving weight loss on your keto diet if nothing is working. Did you know imbalanced hormones are generally at the core of all struggles that women face when it comes to our weight? Grab your free guide at ketoforwomen.com to get the steps you need to overcome the hurdles standing in your way. Thanks so much for listening, and let's get started with the show. Our guest today is Dr. Josh Axe, who's a doctor of natural medicine, chiropractic physician, and clinical nutritionist with a passion to help people get well using food and medicine. He operates one of the world's largest health websites, draxe.com, full of healthy recipes, herbal remedies, nutrition and fitness advice, and information on essential oils and natural supplements. Dr. Axe is an expert in functional medicine, digestive health, and herbal remedies. He founded one of the largest functional medicine clinics in the world in Nashville, Tennessee, and served as a physician for many professional athletes. Dr. Axe is the best-selling author of Eat Dirt and a regular expert on the Dr. Oz show. We're going to be chatting all about whole foods today. And part of the reason my digital programs focus on whole foods is because they support the detoxification process. You can check out chapter seven of the keto beginning for more information about what whole foods are beneficial and what food items to be wary of on keto. So if you already have the keto beginning, head on over to chapter seven because all the details you need are right there. Okay, let's jump over to this interview. Hey, Dr. Axe, how's it going? Hey, great. Uh, Great to be here, Land. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, of course. Uh, So I like to start off by asking all of our guests, uh, what keto means to you? What does keto mean to you? Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a breakthrough diet. That's what it means to me. It means breakthrough because I've worked with a lot of patients over the years who, man, they've tried, they tried a lot of things, you know, they tried different diets and supplements and exercise routines and they worked maybe, but it wasn't completely that breakthrough experience they expected. So for a lot of people, I really think that keto can help them experience a complete breakthrough which is one of the things that makes it unique, right? Because there are so many different diets out there, but it's the only one where your body really gets into ketosis, you know, which, which is so unique and so beneficial for your brain, for resting your pancreas and spleen and certain organs. So there's, you know, so there's a lot of benefits, but breakthrough is what it makes me think of. Do you feel like everyone should follow a ketogenic diet or are you of the mind that some people do better than other people? What's your kind of stance on that? No, no, I don't think everybody should be on a ketogenic diet. I think, um, some people should. And I also think the ketogenic diet, it, it depends on how it's termed. And some of my answers might surprise you. I don't think somebody should live in ketosis their whole life. Now, I know there have been Eskimos who have, you know, and people have, you know, can live a really long and healthy life if they are living in that the majority of the time. I think if you look at our ancient ancestors, they probably went in and out of ketosis on a regular basis. And it's kind of like having a hybrid car. Sometimes you're burning carbs, sometimes you're burning fat. 
but most of us are only burning carbs and not burning fat, and that's a problem. So I think if you can sort of allow yourself to be this hybrid-like car where you're maximizing both forms of fuel efficiently, that's that's what we're looking for. That's that's the best. And I think even historically, when you look at, uh, you know, I, I'm a, I, I read the Bible quite often. And when I read that, they talk about fasting a lot. You know, they talk about fasting in, in, uh, you know, in the Bible for both health and spiritual benefits. It's been used throughout time. So even when you get into a fast uh, or certain types of fasts, you know, sometimes your body starts to get in a certain state there as well. But um, Anyways, yeah, I do think that, you know, the people that I typically don't recommend a ketogenic diet for are people that have liver and gallbladder disease. If somebody has had their gallbladder removed, you know, it's, that system is compromised. And so there's more difficulty in digesting fats. And there are definitely some things that can support your gallbladder and liver, which I, which I'd love to talk about here. But, um, those are typically the people I don't recommend it for people that have liver and gallbladder disease because fat stresses that system of the body naturally it's a it can be a a normal stress you know there's 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 different stressors that can be beneficial but for those people they need to be cautious yeah, I'm glad you mentioned. I, I know that when I first found keto uh, four and a half years ago, I thought the goal was to do keto forever and ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> like that, yeah. that, and and I ran into a lot of issues, especially as a woman with hormones, and uh, my hair was falling out. I wasn't sleeping, and then I thought, okay, well, there has to be a better way. And now my practice is very much: I go in keto and out of keto, and in ketosis and out of ketosis. And that's where I thrive. And I, I'm really happy that you mentioned that because I think so many of us get caught up on, well, if I'm keto, I'm keto hundred percent. And that's what I do. And there's no if, ands or buts about it. And if I don't do that, then I'm off the wagon and that's the end of the conversation. So I'm glad that we kind of set the base there. And so I definitely want to get into organ support specifically on a ketogenic diet. But when we asked our patrons, what do you want to know from Dr. Josh X? They all said, I want to pick his brain on cleansing on a ketogenic diet. Sure. Is it possible? Because people think cleansing, juice fast. <laughs> and that's the kind of um, association that they have with cleansing. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. ButcherBox features 100% grass-fed and finished heritage-bred pork and organic free-range chicken. ButcherBox sends you high-quality, health-promoting meats directly to your door on dry ice and free shipping anywhere in the lower 48. ButcherBox makes committing to quality protein sources less expensive and more available to everyone. Their prices are hard to beat, and it's challenging to find a higher quality product anywhere in the USA. I've been using ButcherBox for years and love the convenience of a package showing up just when I need it, and their ground sausage is an absolute dream. ButcherBox has put together a super special deal for all listeners of the show. Order your first box and get a special gift plus an additional $20 off. Now, this special gift is so epic that I can't even mention it on the episode today. So you'll have to go to butcherbox.com slash keto diet to check out the deal plus get your $20 off your very first order. Again, that's butcherbox.com slash keto diet to check out the deal plus get $20 off your first order. If you're unsure of the link, simply check out today's show notes for all the details. So can we chat a little bit about cleansing and how it's not just juice fasts? Yeah, absolutely. And and one of the things that I think I, I'd love to bring up too is when we're looking at Western thought versus Eastern thought in terms of medicine and, and health, how they how they're very, very different. When we hear the word cleanse, there, there, there's a few ways to cleanse. One way that we think of cleansing today is we're sort of energizing your liver to dump and release more, or your kidneys to filter more, your lungs to release more. I mean, those types of things. And I think, you know, if you're looking at more of a, which, which that can happen to a degree, absolutely. There are certain herbs and, and diets and things in order to do that. Um, also, though, part of what cleansing is, is just going easy on a system of your body where you're not stressing it and it's regenerating, it's recovering it, and then it's doing its job even better. And your liver is your body's largest detoxification organ. So when you're going to consume a high fat diet, you are choosing to put more stress on that system. And, and, and so and here, here's why I think the ketogenic diet 
is so beneficial for most people. Most people consume a high carbohydrate diet. And with that, different macronutrients stress different systems. For instance, protein, large amounts of branched chain amino acids are going to cause more stress on the kidneys. Okay. That's an area of your body that has to deal with that. Your liver gallbladder are they digest fat, right? Your liver produces bile, your gallbladder releases it, it breaks down, digests fat. And carbohydrates are dealt with by your pancreas. You know, your pancreas and your stomach are dealing with that more, but especially your pancreas has to deal with that. And so when you go on a keto diet, in essence, you are, I know we don't think of it like this necessarily, but you're detoxing, you are resting, and you're letting your pancreas regenerate. That's why when you go carb free, you think diabetes, right? They say diabetic sugar is the issue, right? Well, if you have a diabetic go on more of a paleo, low carb, or especially a keto diet, you're resting the pancreas. It's not having to work. Remember this truth. This is, this is a big thing that when I learned this, it changed the way that I, I deal with medicine and nutrition. Supplements don't heal you. Foods don't heal you. Diets don't heal you. The keto diet doesn't heal you. Turmeric doesn't heal you. Bone broth doesn't heal you. The body heals itself. Okay. And a lot of times we just need to give our body a rest, a system of our body a break. Okay. If you've got adrenal fatigue, yeah, rhodiola rosea and ashwagandha and, you know, licorice root extract, man, those are some great supplements. And they can help, okay? They can help lower cortisol. They can help balance things. But sometimes you need to unplug and rest. Like you can't, you know, work 25 hours, 24 hours a day. And you just got to rest your system. So I just wanted to bring that up that when we're talking about cleansing, there's an element of using certain foods that do support your body in cleansing. But a big part of cleansing is, man, just rest in that system of the body, not allowing it to overwork. So when you are on a ketogenic diet, you're typically really allowing, number one, your pancreas to rest, and to a degree, sometimes your, your kidney system, depending on how much protein or other areas of your body, but definitely you're allowing your pancreas to rest, which then helps balance out insulin. And insulin is so key for so many things, especially when we're talking hormonal health. It is huge. Insulin affects cortisol. It affects, it, it affects a lot of our you know, adrenal hormones, it affects estrogen, it affects progesterone, our, our testosterone, our reproductive health. So that's one of the reasons why the keto diet for some people especially can be such a, a game changer is that when you balance out insulin, it really does this amazing thing for your body hormonally, which also, you know, works with leptin and ghrelin and fat loss and your body burning fat. So there's a lot of benefits there. But in terms of some of the cleansing benefits, the first benefit is you're resting the system of your body, your pancreas, you're allowing it to regenerate and help balance insulin levels, which just across the board is huge for so many people. In terms of cleansing on a keto diet, I think if you're doing the ketogenic diet the right way, there can be an element of cleansing, but at the same time, your liver is doing more work. So I don't know that necessarily your liver is then able to go and do more if you're on a ketogenic diet compared to other diets, in fact, it probably can do less because they're, it's doing more. It's digesting more. It's breaking down more fat, producing more bile. It's doing that. But at the same time, if you're doing a ketogenic the right way where it's not all butter and bacon and it's a lot of plants, you know, in addition to getting your healthy fat from, you know, coconut and avocados and grass-fed meats and wild salmon and flax and chia and these different sources – you know, in addition to that, if you're doing lots of plants, you're doing some cilantro, you're doing parsley, you're doing turmeric root, right? All of those really support the body in detoxification. And, and, and there are different channels to detox. If we want to talk about detoxifying your liver, you know, bupleurum is probably one of my favorites along with milk thistle. Now, bupleurum is one not used widely in the U.S. today. It's the number one herb for detoxification in China. If you've ever heard of TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, bupleurum is the most uh, commonly used detoxifying root or plant for that reason. Milk thistle is unique. Milk thistle doesn't necessarily cause your body to de it has slight detoxification benefits. The big benefit of milk thistle is that it causes it really supports uh, liver regeneration. So so regeneration of the tissue so your liver can do you know, it can do better work. And so again, those are two of my favorites. I think turmeric is great along with those. Um, a lot of people do dandelion. Dandelion's really powerful. Your liver is the one system of your body one of the only systems of your body that doesn't necessarily need a jump start all the time. Like a lot of times, our livers are strong. It's a very yang organ in Chinese, but it's just very strong. 
And so you kind of lightly want to support it in, in cleansing. You don't want to go overboard. So dandelion on occasion, if it's springtime, like March, April, hey, do some dandelion tea for detox. But if not, I think you're better off sticking with the milk thistle, the buplerum, the turmeric rue. Taking those on a regular basis has, has, has a lot of benefits. Such so your liver system. And then, of course, I just want to hit on two other systems. You know, talking about cleansing your colon, cleansing your digestive system. I think doing large doses of probiotics. You know, a lot of times, you know, we see people taking five to 10 billion CFUs. You want to be doing at least 50. I would say, I think it's great to be doing 100 billion, uh, what's called CFU a day, which is typically two capsules twice a day of a high dose probiotic. But I think doing lots and lots of these probiotics can be greatly beneficial for cleansing your colon. And especially a type of probiotic called SBOs, that's soil-based organism probiotics. They're the type of probiotics you'd find in the soil today, Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus clausi, Bacillus um, coagulans, these type of probiotics. So, so think about this. Our ancient ancestors, they got probiotics in their food, right, via kefir and sauerkraut and even ketchup. You know, they, they, got, they got some probiotics from their food, and it was a natural way to preserve food as well. But they also grabbed carrots from the ground and some beets and lettuce, washed it off. They didn't chlorinate it, right? They're, and, and if you look at carrots, there's still a little bit of dirt and planted in there. It's not just dirt. Those are, those are types of microorganisms or probiotics that actually in clinical study, or there's a great human study done in Japan, and it was shown it actually helps us break down and digest our food, especially local food. And so I think getting those types of probiotics can be really, really beneficial for our gastrointestinal tract in terms of cleansing. And then there's an Ayurvedic blend of three berries called Trifala. It's a blend of amla berry and a couple others. And I think that can be great for people. For It's more of a gentle cleanser of the colon, but I think the Trifala with probiotics is really great when we're talking colon health and detoxification. And in addition to that, you know, reducing inflammation and keeping your, your, your uh, digestive tract slightly warm rather than cold. So ginger is a very, very good herb that was used in, both in Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine. And then uh, your kidneys, you know, your kidney system, getting lots of antioxidants and foods that are slightly sour actually really support the liver and the kidney system. So, you know, cranberry, lemon juice, uh, those types of things, even sauerkraut, but foods that are lightly sour and really dark and full of antioxidants like cranberries, like blueberries. Um, now, obviously on a keto diet, you're not going to get many of those. So here's what I recommend if you're on a keto diet. A lot of us are missing out on the potassium and some of those antioxidants that are found in fruit. So getting a berry powder that is very high in antioxidants and low in carbohydrates, acai berry powder, maki berry powder, which is spelled M-A-Q-U-I. Those are two berry powders that are very low in carbohydrates, but super high in antioxidants. I think just adding those into a smoothie or to, you know just even water, but I think it's a good way to really support your, your liver, your kidneys, antioxidants across the board. Yeah. So I know I, know I kind of jumped all over the place there, but no, um, that's great. yeah. I hope you're really enjoying today's episode. I'd love to see where you're listening from. Snap a pic and tag me at Healthful Pursuit or leave a review for the show on your favorite podcast player. It helps me out tremendously. Okay, back to the good stuff. So I guess what I might be hearing from you and what other listeners might have just heard is keto may not need to be practiced all the time. And when you are eating keto, certain systems are relaxed, like your pancreas, whereas other systems like your liver are having to work a lot harder or become a little bit more efficient and might not be able to do other things. So while you are eating keto, here are a couple of ways that you can uh, encourage cleansing. Now, would you do that on a daily basis, like the things like parsley, turmeric, milk thistle, or is that just like a period of time while you're keto and then other periods of time while you're keto, you're not doing those things? Or is this just like when you eat keto, if you want to just keep your systems in tip top shape before you transition to paleo for a couple of weeks, this is what you want to do. Yeah. yeah I, I think if you're doing keto, I think it's a great thing to do. I think we should be consuming a lot of highly alkaline foods. And listen, I'm not one to say, go eat an alkaline diet. It cures everything. I don't think that at all. I just think when you're eating more foods that are I mean, fat meat in general is slightly acidic, just naturally. It's not bad. It's just, ba it's, it's just the way it is. So we do want to be getting a lot of greens, and we do want to be doing a lot of those 
nutrient dense plants. And I'll say this as well. I hear a lot of people talk about, you know, kale is so popular for so long. It's still so popular today. And, you know, people think kale is king, broccoli is best. I mean, those are two amazing vegetables that are really nutrient dense. But they pale in comparison to the nutrient value in herbs and spices. Cilantro is way more nutrient dense than kale. Parsley is more nutrient dense than kale. The phytonutrients and therapeutic compounds in turmeric and ginger root and ashwagandha are much more potent than kale and broccoli as well. So when you look at our biggest deficiencies across the board, especially the U.S. or, or Europe or Australia compared to Asia and uh, certain areas of the world that have a very long lifespan, our biggest deficiencies, number one is herbs and spices. Number one. Number two is going to be collagen in our diet. You know, I think if I could add three things into everybody's diet right now, it would be number one, the category of herbs and spices. Number two, bone broth and collagen. Number three would be organ meats like liver, you know, chicken liver and, and you know, glandulars that are so high in B vitamins and CoQ10 and some really other really unique nutrients as well. So um, I forgot why I got on that tangent. But um, anyways, it's, you know, so, so oh, to answer the question, yes, I think if you're on a keto diet, doing lots of those greens can be, is really beneficial. Cool. And you said a couple of things and I just figured because you are who you are, I'm going to pick your brain on this because yeah, yeah. I've been curious about it. I've had people ask with collagen, should I be, uh, there are a lot of people that are saying with collagen supplementation that they need to be um, supplementing with a lot of vitamin C to make it available. What do you think on that? Yeah, you know, I mean, the way this works in your body, so and in order to utilize a lot of things, you need what are called cofactors or enzymes or certain things that help convert, okay? So this is, you know, so, so that's really common in nutrition. You know, I, I don't know that there's a, a, a study that has said this exact clinical dosage for this person. So that's the problem we run into. So maybe somebody said that one time until I see it in a study, I would actually disagree with that. And here, here's what I want to tell you, that when we look at, the amount of, uh, of the type of amino acids we have in our body that makes up us from, from, our, from our makeup. 30% of the type of amino acids that make up our body are collagen protein types. Versus the other type, I'll throw them in a category of muscle building proteins, which are branched chain amino acids and methionine. So we have collagen proteins and muscle building proteins, these two categories. 30% of your body's total amino acid makeup, our collagen proteins, 70% of our skin, our hair, our nails, our gut lining, our arterial and, and our, our uh, cardiovascular tissue, our bones, our discs, our ligaments, our tendons, our fascia, all of our connective tissue, all of the, our teeth, all of the things I just mentioned are made up of more than 70% collagen. And it's a principle in Chinese medicine. When you eat something that's made up of something, it supports that tissue, okay? So we know that when you eat, and I'll, I'll kind of go across the board with this, and even when you eat a food that looks like an organ, it supports that. When you cut open a carrot, it looks like an eye. We know in clinical studies, carrots are high in beta carotene, which supports your eye. We know beets are really red. It looks like blood. We know that now that they boost nitric oxide, and a lot of athletes now drink beetroot juice because it's so amazing for your endurance and cardiovascular system, okay? So... And also we know chicken liver, beef liver, venison liver, liver is super high in B12 and certain amino acids that cause your support liver detoxification. We know eating, like say beef heart is the highest food in coenzyme Q10 in the world. So it supports your heart health, coenzyme Q10. All that being said, 30% of our body is made up of collagen. If, if, if we even ate by that ratio in terms of protein, amount of protein we're consuming on a daily basis, let's say somebody eats... 100 grams of protein a day, okay? 30 grams then should potentially be from collagen protein. They should be the amino acids of proline, glycine, hydroxyproline, those amino acids found in, in collagen-rich foods like chicken skin, bone broth, right? Uh, you know, those types of things. So to me, I, I, don't, I don't agree or disagree with what they're saying that, hey, vitamin C may support conversion. Magnesium supports calcium and so does vitamin D and K2. And, you know, all those are important. It's important to have, eat, eat a well-rounded diet. But I, but I, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have somebody then that keep them from consuming more collagen. I think for the average person, they should be consuming at least 20 grams of collagen every single day, which is typical serving, you know, 20, 20 grams or so. And I think if not, we're, we're deficient. I think a lot of people should do collagen loading, like doing probably three servings a day for 30 days and at least a serving a day after that. But I think it's, I've seen 
big results when I used to have patients do a bone broth fast. I had them do this with keto too. I had them do lots and lots of bone broth along with, um, with, with when I put them on a keto diet or if I was just having them do a, what I'd call a bone broth cleanse. And it was really tremendous for their health. One of the things we're talking about keto, bone broth or taking a, a multi-collagen supplement or a, so even something like a bone broth protein. Again, you can do it in protein powder. You can make it home or buy it frozen, however you want to do it. But bone broth is really unique because those amino acids that make up collagen, I mentioned proline, hydroxyproline, there's a third and it's called glycine. Glycine is responsible for liver detoxification. And there was actually a study that showed that if somebody consumes more branched chain amino acid, it's a lot of muscle meat like chicken breast, it could potentially shorten their lifespan. If somebody consumed more glycine in their diet via things like bone broth, it could increase their lifespan. And this goes back to the omega-3. I used to teach lectures 10, 15 years ago. And when I asked the audience, how many of you have heard of omega-3 fatty acids? I'm serious. Tw let's say 12 years ago, 10% of people would raise their hand. Almost nobody knew what an omega-3 fat was 10, 15, 20 years ago. But now we know you've got to have a balance of omega-3 and omega-6, right? You got to have a balance of the type of fats that we consume. All the clinical research we're going to start seeing in the future, not only do you need a balance of fats, you need a balance of, antioc of, of uh, proteins. You need a balance of collagen-rich proteins and muscle-building proteins, and probably very similar to omega-3s, which is about a three-to-one ratio. It's a very, very similar ratio in those collagen to muscle-building proteins, and there's not much research on it yet. I have, there are a couple good studies, but we'll start seeing them in the future. It'll be the next big thing is balance out the type of, of proteins you're consuming. Yeah, I love that. I can't wait for that to come out. I know I was asked this question when I was on tour. Somebody said, well, I don't supplement with collagen because I read somewhere that you have to hyper um, supplement with vitamin C. And I'm like, I haven't read that anywhere in any research that I know of. No, I mean, there's no doubt that there are that um, vitamin C supports collagen production by your own body, which is great. And there are some superfoods uh, in addition that do that. I think any food that's going to support stem cell production as well is going to be good. Turmeric contains turmeric, which does that. Um, but also like, um, I mean, I personally sometimes will do more vitamin C. So I do a powder, similar berry powder I talked about, camu camu berry powder and amla berry powder. Very, very high in vitamin C, almost no carbohydrates. It, they're sour. They don't taste fantastic. But, you know, camu camu is what, what, what it would help. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. Superfat is a certified keto and paleo line of macadamia and almond-based convenient on-the-go nut butter pouches with five different dairy-free flavors. My favorite flavor is cacao coconut, lightly sweet, perfectly salty, and so chocolatey. With 22 plant-based fats, 3 grams of net carbs, 2 grams of sugars with no added sugar, 5 grams of protein, and 6 grams of fiber. I chow down on Superfat. When we're sailing, I pack them in my trail bag. I just started using them for beach volleyball and long flights for easy fat on the go. Each pouch contains about 50% more than other nut butter pouches with healthy plant fats found in super fat support sustained levels of energy, cognition, and mental clarity. Macadamia nuts are found in all flavors and are scientifically proven to help speed up metabolism. And Superfat just launched cookie bites in chocolate chip, peanut butter chocolate chip, and snickerdoodle. Now they're made with dairy, but they sure look tasty and super crunchy. You can use the code LEANNE, all in caps, for 15% off when you go to superfat.com. That's L-E-A-N-N-E -N -N -E as the code for your 15% off by going to superfat.com. If you're unsure of the link, you can check out today's show notes at ketodietpodcast.com for all the details. So we've chatted a little bit about how keto may not be a lifetime thing, but when we're on it, we're cleansing and supporting our systems. And you chatted a little bit about different organs that are more burdened depending on how you eat. I'd love to pick your brain on the carnivore thing that's happening in the space right now. If you're familiar with carnivore and people moving toward just eating meat for long periods of time, benefits, drawbacks, thoughts on that. If, if you've experienced it in your practice yet? Yeah, you know, I think that uh, there's something to be said about consuming a mono diet for a period of time. Let's say if somebody decides they're just going to eat red meat. It's probably for a 30-day period, 
probably is more beneficial than somebody might realize. Because you're really resting a system of your body. Your body knows, hey, I just got to eat meat right now. Really simple for the stomach pH. It, it actually it can be simple for your body for a period of time. I think over a period of time, though, it, you get out of balance. I, I, think, I think that's the way I'd put it. Your body gets out of balance. You're starting to tax your liver a little bit more. And your body isn't getting really much fiber. So maybe your colon gets a little, there, there's stagnation that starts to happen there. And, you know, meat more than plants tend to be more yang. So your body probably is moving. You know, there's, there's, when I first started hearing these words in Chinese medicine, I thought, that's kind of out there. No. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> and I just realized it's a different language. And they look at the, and these words are very holistic in nature. Yin is the more feminine aspect of our, 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 our spirit, our mind and our body. It's yoga, right? It's, that's a very yin uh, practice where CrossFit is a very, uh, or bodybuilding is more of a yang practice. And, um, and so anyways, all that being said, it probably pulls somebody more yang if somebody's going to do that for a period of time, which over time, that just, it brings you out of balance. It, it's, and when you're out of balance, disease builds up in your system. So for a short period of time, yeah, that's probably fine. It can actually probably have some great health benefits for a long period of time. I think it's really going to pull someone out of balance. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I love your approach. And I'm of the same thought of trying on different eating styles and rotating between them and learning about your body and transitioning. And I love that you, that you take that approach as well. So um, if somebody, let's say um, this lady is 40 years old and she really loves the ketogenic diet and she's just listened to this episode and thought, okay, so maybe I shouldn't be keto all the time. Like maybe I need to transition and I'm feeling really good. What would be your recommendation to her on other things that she could try incorporating into her life where she's keto sometimes, but not all the time? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I have a term for it. In fact, I'm, I'm writing a book now and in my book, it's a, it's a section of the book and I call it Keto Cycling. And there's a lot of different ways to cycle keto. But, you know, my, my wife actually has done this. And my wife is really fit and lean. You can check out. She's got a really popular Instagram page. It's Dr. Chelsea Axe. So Dr. Chelsea Axe on Instagram. And, um, and what she does is she does two keto days, carb day, two keto days, carb day, two keto days, carb day. And that's actually how she's cycled. She's actually done that for about a year now. And she feels amazing. And she was already very... She was already really fit, but she lost about another 10 pounds and she was excited because, you know, her abs show so well now and that type of thing. So anyways, I'm like, baby, like great anyways. But uh, <laughs> anyways, she, uh, you know, she started doing this keto cycling where she did two keto days carb day. And it's kind of like she would kind of start dipping into ketosis like the night right before. So she'd dip in a little bit and then go back out. So there's ways to do it. You could do a one week on, one week off. I would say this, though, when you're not on the keto part, you know, your carbohydrates should be coming from carbs that are nutrient dense. And typically, ideally, they are lower glycemic. Now, I'm, all, I'm not all about the glycemic index or following that as a diet. But I do think if, I, if it were me, the carbohydrates I would consume would come a lot from fruit, especially berries. And then if I was going to do a whole grain, I would probably make like a kanji where I'd put rice in a slow cooker, a sprouted rice, and put it in a slow cooker and let that go for, you know, 24 hours. That's what they consume primarily in Asia, especially if someone's ill. It's very easy to digest on the body, which, which, which is great. So if I was doing a grain, it'd be a sprouted rice I cooked, you know, for, for overnight in a slow cooker and for, for other things, I would probably do a lot of berries, probably things like sweet potatoes, pumpkin, I think is great, different types of squash, like butternut squash. But I think that's what it should look like. And I think, you know, not going completely overboard, I think easing yourself back in, I don't know if there's a number, hey, maybe it's, you know, you're eating 30 grams three times a day, about 90 to 100 grams of carbs in some of your meals, that type of thing. Because, you know, your body reaches a level, hey, you don't want to go over the level of what your body's going to burn in a day because then your body's storing it as fat. And most of us don't need more fat. Okay. There's, I mean, there's a few, you know, there, there, there are people, but it's very rare that, that we actually need more. So I would say that, um, yeah, I would say that's kind of what, what I would, what, what it would look like. Everything you just described is what I put in my program, fat fueled and in my paperback book, the keto diet, and we call them fat fueled profiles. And there's three different profiles. And that's dependent on how often you have carbs, how many carbs, depending on your goals or your health imbalances. So yeah, we totally align on that thought awesome. too. So that's awesome. Okay. So what do you think is missing in the keto space right now that you wish 
existed but didn't. It could be the book that you're writing. <laughs> it could be anything that you feel is missing. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention this. And again, sorry, sh uh, self promotion here. So, um, but uh, you know, my, myself and Jordan Rubin, we, we really created what I think is a pretty great uh, keto supplement line that actually Whole Foods Market just brought in, Vitamin Shop just brought in, and we have it online as well. But we, we created what when we when I've worked with patients who were on a keto diet, there are certain things I noticed that they had a hard time with, or maybe support they would need. So one of those things we just came out with was something called keto protein. So we came out with a protein powder that's keto friendly. Most protein powders are just protein. They don't have the right type of fats in them. When we eat nature, if you're eating even animal meat, there is some fat there to go along with the meat. I think a lot of times these foods work synergistically, but keto protein is a balance of, it's a it's a protein that comes from bone broth. Okay. So it's actually a bone broth protein mixed with fats that come from MCT oil, avocado, and some really unique adaptogenic herbs that are in there that really help with stress hormones. So doing a keto protein, which is essentially very high in broth and collagen, doing a keto collagen, which is high in collagen, doing a keto digest supplement. Um, Jordan and I have that as part of our line, but it's really high in lipase and other herbs like milk thistle and bitter herbs which support that's another thing to note that bitter herbs support your fat digestion so when you're on a keto diet you want to be doing lots of things that are bitter which are typically herbs it's you know it's um you know cinnamon it's parsley like arugula beets uh or beet greens especially artichokes these are bitter foods you know they're they're really great for your liver and gallbladder and so and also enzymes like lipase or ox bile can be great and those can be found in like like i mentioned like a, a keto di digestive supplement for which has enzymes and then lots of probiotics i think are crucial loading up on the probiotics both in food and in supplement form and then actually getting maybe even a multivitamin there's actually a, a keto multi in the company's ancient nutrition and um, you can find it a whole, uh, you know, online as well. But typically, when we're on a keto diet. I think getting extra B vitamins can really benefit your body, especially B12 and zinc is another one I think can be really beneficial. But I would say that, that that's something I wish you know um, that I'm excited that is just now getting out there. And uh, again, you know, it's it, it, Jordan I's company's Ancient Nutrition, but we really think we're, we're really putting out the first ever full keto line of products because we really believe the ketogenic diet can be so beneficial and powerful for so many people, especially when it's done the right way. And again, for some people, I think getting some of those things can be really, really, really helpful. That's amazing. And where can people find more from you? What's your website, Instagram, all the things? Yeah, sure. Yeah, my website is drax.com. It's just D-R-A-X-E.com. And I also um, do a lot on Facebook and Instagram. So if you follow me, Dr. Josh Axe on Instagram and on Facebook, I do a lot of Instagram lives and Instagram TV and, and posts on there. And you can see what I do, kind of what, what I'm eating and, and my wife and family and our dogs, uh, which I think you're more popular than I am. And um, <laughs> so anyways, yeah, it's uh, a good, good place to find out more. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And we'll include all of the links that you just mentioned in the show notes for everyone in our podcast extras, which you guys can find at healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E103. Thanks again. Great, right? Now you see why it's one of my favorites. And he was just so great to have on the show. This was when I was I had enough internet and wasn't living on a boat. Actually, we were living on the boat. I, yeah, I would I would rent Airbnbs and record a bunch of podcast episodes back to back to back, like eight episodes a day, three days in a row. I would be so exhausted. And oh, my gosh, it was it was fun, but it was also horrible because it would drain me out so much. So this is why we now do takeovers of the show because I don't have enough internet on the boat to be able to do these and the budget was just getting crazy. So it was really, really nice to listen to this episode where I was doing interviews and I really do miss interviewing, but it's so nice to have people take over the show so that I'm not exhausted and I don't need to stress about internet in the middle of the ocean. So next up on the podcast is a complete surprise to me because I haven't planned that far in advance, even though you think it's a week away. It's really a couple of weeks. And I just haven't gotten there because again, it's my birthday today and I have crazy things to do. Actually, probably not really. Um, but I uh, can't wait to share another episode with you. Sunday, May 17th will be episode 248. I don't know what we're going to be talking about, but I think it's going to be great. So I will see you there. Bye.
Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor should it be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.